Good morning and welcome. It's good to have you with us today as we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All the earth shall bow down before you, O God, and shall sing to you, shall sing to your name, O Most High. The Lord be with you. Mindful of our sinful ways, we call upon the mercy of a loving God to come and rest upon us. Lord Jesus, you call us to faith. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you call us to hope. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to love. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to life everlasting. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who govern all things both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people, and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve for Saul, whom I have rejected as king of Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. But Samuel replied, How can I go? Saul will hear of it and kill me. To this the Lord answered, Take a heifer along and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I myself will tell you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one I point out to you. Samuel did as the Lord had commanded him. When he entered Bethlehem, the elders of the city came trembling to meet him and inquired, Is your visit peaceful, O seer? He replied, Yes, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. So cleanse yourselves and join me today for the banquet. He also had Jesse and his sons cleanse themselves and invited them to the sacrifice. As they came, he looked at Eliab and thought, Surely the anointed one is here before him. But the Lord said to him, Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees does God see, because he sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and presented him before Samuel, who said, Lord has not chosen him. Next Jesse presented Shammah, but Samuel said, The Lord has not chosen this one either. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel, but Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any one of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, There is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to him, Send for him. We will not begin the sacrifice banquet, sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to him. He was ruddy, a youthful, handsome to behold, and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, There, anoint him, for he is he. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in hand, anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. When Samuel took his leave, he went to Ramah. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I have found David my servant. I have found David my servant. Once you spoke in a vision, and to your faithful ones you said, On a champion I have placed a crown over the people I have set a youth. I have found David my servant. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil I have anointed him, that my hand may be always with him, 
and that my arm may make him strong. I have found David my servant. He shall say to me, You are my father, my God, the rock, my savior, and I will make him the firstborn, highest of the kings of the earth. I have found David my servant. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. As Jesus was passing through a field of grain on the Sabbath, his disciples began to make a path while picking the heads of grain. At this the Pharisees said to him, Look, why are you doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? He said to them, Have you never read what David did when he was in need, and he and his companions were hungry, how he went into the house of God when Abithar was high priest and ate the bread of the offering that only the priests could lawfully eat, and shared it with his companions? Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. That is why the Son of Man is Lord, even of the Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. It takes humility to come to terms with what truly is the right path to choose. Because if we only look at the externals, which is what the prophet was kind of doing in our first reading, and not looking into the heart, as God says, he was going to choose the Anointed One from appearances only. But it took God having him understand that one needs to peer into the heart in order to make the right decision. In the Gospel today, we have these, what I call, pop-up Pharisees. I call them pop-up Pharisees because they're complaining to Jesus that his disciples are picking grains of wheat on the Sabbath and eating them. And my question would be, well, how did the Pharisees get in the field? Because they were breaking the Sabbath that they were doing unnecessary walking around and, and alike. So I call them the pop-up Pharisees because they just show up. And Jesus, like in our first reading, says that the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Whenever I hear that phrase, I think of the uh, statement that someone made a long time ago with, in form of a question. Do I work to live or do I live to work? We all know, folks, hopefully not ourselves, that really live to work, that that's their whole life, is they pour themselves into their work and that becomes more important than anything else. I personally have seen marriages crumble because someone was focused so much on their job, thinking that that's what they should be focused on, you know, providing for their family financially, but forgetting what's far more important than financial responsibility is love of one's family, of relational love for one's family, of being present to one's family. How many times have we heard, or we ourselves found ourselves in situations where we say, why was I doing it this way? Why didn't I realize that time with my family is far more important than being gone so much, absent from all these different opportunities I could have been with them? I realized that I lived to work rather than worked to live. So in light of the readings that we have today, let us not make ourselves so righteous that we think we know the answers all the time. Because many times the answer that we're looking at is only surface deep. We haven't taken the time to look into a person's heart. And that's what God calls us to do. When folks look into our hearts, do they see the goodness of the Lord residing there? Or 
are there perhaps a cobweb or two that we gotta clean up and get out of the way so that truly looking into our hearts is the reflection of a loving God. Mindful of God's presence in our lives, let us bring our prayers before him. For our church and her mission to serve all people, may the Lord guide her in fruitfulness, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in civil service, may God strengthen their commitment to protect and defend human life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who struggle to find hope in their daily lives, may God provide for their ever spiritual and physical need, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us who are participating in this worship today, may the Holy Spirit help us grow in our understanding of our baptismal vocation to holiness and direct us in our path to fulfill it, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may the mercy of God usher them into the fullness of eternal life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the particular needs that we bring here to this time of prayer and worship today, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, you have lovingly bestowed on us your gifts of peace, hope, and joy. Hear the prayers we present today through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands to the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of the sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you have made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Earl our Bishop, and all servants of your church. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of your Son, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Confident in God's endless love for us, we now pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. In graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Mm -hmm. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. 
For on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those who have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We go in God's peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a most blessed day.